Camaraderie to me is the opposite of loneliness. At the end of the day, humans were meant to be together. So to move over, it's, there's one of the biggest problems I've found with remote work is the loneliness problem. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and you probably have encountered this. I think it's a very, um, it's part of the human condition, loneliness. But yeah. some people love offices and some people do not. And I think the people that do not either get their human interactions through other means, their family, going outside, their friends, or maybe they just need less human interactions. They are more introverted. And then the people that go to the office get energy from other people. And I think you, you kind of hit the nail on the head earlier when you said like, the key thing to remote is hiring people who are uh, good at remote, who want to do remote. But uh, most of the world now is in the situation where we, we have a bunch of the company who never wanted to be remote, uh, who now is. And I'm wondering if you have any insights into how you solve this loneliness problem, how you get people interacting. Yeah. Camaraderie is a really, like, I, this is the, like, I, camaraderie to me is the opposite of loneliness a little bit. Like, you're still, look, at the end of the day, humans were meant to be together. We were meant to have community. We were meant to eat and break bread together. Like, that's just in our DNA. And so it's a weird thing to take away the thing that provided that for so many folks. The office, whether we intended it to or not, is the thing that gives that to so many, so much of society. And so with it gone, we have to really figure out how to do that in other ways. Now, a big part of it for us is we, one, try and just state that honestly as folks come into the company before through the interview process and when they're onboarding we say hey you're going to need to figure out how to get that human bond outside of work to a degree whether that's for some folks it comes easy you have a family and so all of a sudden it's just sort of baked in there others already have like clubs or you know religious groups or um nonprofits or volunteers or sports activities that they involve in with their community so they're already getting in, in other ways but even still, work is 40 hours a week. That's a big chunk of the week that you still need to fill, try and provide a little bit of this. We've gotten a lot better at it over time. I think the thing that we've, that sort of made us, we got to a stage where we were big enough that we were hiring more regularly. And we started to figure out we can create community and cohorts as part of the onboarding process. And so now we start folks every two weeks on a Monday. So you start with a group of people and the first two weeks on the job, really week and a half, you're not doing your regular job. You're actually there to onboard together. And so it just starts with, here's three or four people that you have a shared interest in and that you started at the same company at the same time. And you're going through the same set of stuff together. So you already have people that you know. So that creates a group of folks that you have a sense of community with that's not your manager. You know, you're going to have to build that with your manager, but your manager is your manager. It's not really like, hey, these are just like people that I can hang out and just be myself a little bit more. You want that with your manager, but it still is just hard to totally get there all the time. So that's one thing we started with. Then we start, we've layered in other things that help people find a bit of a, a tribe a little bit. So uh, inside of Slack, we have these off-topic non-work channels that are all for whatever interest you might have. So we have things like, you know, fun sports, fun movies, all the way to more esoteric stuff like fun gardening, fun knitting, fun uh, ham radio. So it's just like these things that folks are into. And we talk about those as part of the onboarding. It's like, hey, just, it's, you know, you can go hang out in these channels. It's fine to spend some of your work time hanging out in there. Um, you know, they don't get abused. Generally, people are not spending 40 hours a week just doing non-work stuff because they're just hanging out talking sports all the time, but it's usually a nice way to just get to know another set of people. Then we also do this, uh, this pair uh, donut thing, which is a donut.ai, this bot that matches people up into Slack every week. And so you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So you have these little things that we've just layered in, all of which are meant to keep focus, focusing people on building those connections, building those tribes, building a sense of togetherness and then all the managers are sort of taught how to do this with their teams too so you build a sense of cohesion with the core people you work with regularly all of this all this said 
it doesn't solve it 100%. It makes things a lot better. And in fact, there are people inside the company who would cite, hey, I feel a sense of belonging at Zapier. I feel a sense of, you know, friendship, kinship with my teammates that I didn't feel when I worked in the office. That happens regularly. But there are still people who, you know, not a lot. I would say maybe one, uh, probably one to maybe eh, probably more than 1%. Maybe two or three percent of total people who've ever been hired in the company have left because they're like, I just can't do it. Like I just can't. I, I want to. I need to be around people. So it does happen that um, people can't make it through it. But I'd say more folks have it in them to be successful at this if you do a good job of nurturing it than than not. Got it. So to re reiterate, there's a kind of personal responsibility aspects of it, and you um, you gonna yeah drill that into them during the onboarding, and then. You also set them up with a cohort of people. And then lastly, uh, you have all these events. I'm wondering, do you have any uh, like Slack, uh, sorry, Zoom events or like, do you have yoga or meditation? Or... Oh, yeah, we have stuff like that that's been self-organized at this point in time. Um, like the company doesn't actually really do much to sort of organize that. That's all very like, that's the default action, self-organization of the company kicking in where uh, there's like a, Zapier social calendar now, where he's, which um, has been more active during COVID, where people are like, hey, let's watch a movie at night sort of thing, which, um, cool, like, go for it, right? Uh, I, I'm not going to stop you from doing that. Or, hey, let's, you know, do some meditation together. Uh, or let's um, do like a, a, a talent show with our kids um, who are not at school right now. Um, so like that kind of stuff is happening, um, which I think is great. Like it just sort of shows that at a certain point, if you get this stuff right, the culture takes over. Like the, the people in the company take over and just start to like expand it and build on it in ways that probably you never would have anticipated or thought to do. That's really interesting. And Matt, I know you've thought a bit about this problem. I'm wondering if you have any, any, any ideas. Uh, well, I do, and I would, would love to hear, Wade, how, the, how you react to these. And this sort of goes to um, you know, the whole company, but then you can also zoom in on smaller groups, like the exec team is sort of a core group that people think about. And it seems to me that camaraderie is built and community is built by two things, by um, physically seeing people and working, you know, sensing them as humans, um, but also uh, sort of doing work projects together and then also knowing things about them personally. And so mm -hmm. what, what I found is, and, and letting people know that you know things about them personally. So sharing personal information as a group, like I'm just, every employee is gonna share the name of their spouse, the name of their kids, the name of their pet, things they like to do for fun, things where they grew up, um, you know, ask me about blank, because I love to talk yeah. about it. Okay, and mm -hmm. then with that information, uh, people can have when they do get together, they can spend one or two minutes before their meeting saying, hey, can you please let me know about how your wife, you know, Susie's doing or how your husband yeah. John is doing. And it's mm -hmm. just a way of, in the one-on-one -on -one anyway, of letting people know, oh gosh, this person actually cares about me as a human. Yeah. Um, and then what I've also found is that you can also, you don't even have to let that be um, a verbal interaction over Zoom. It can actually be a text. Say, hey, you know, mm -hmm. I, uh, I saw this article on tennis and I remembered that you enjoy tennis. So I just, it reminded me of you. Done. Takes about 30 seconds. And then the person on the receiving end goes, wow, that, that, that person remembered that I like tennis. I feel so complimented. And so it can yeah. be very sort of not only effective method, but time effective method. And especially for a CEO who really is, everyone wants to have a, a personal relationship with a CEO. But for you to do that in a one-on-one -on -one or in an in-person in manner, it, even if were in-person were an option, it would just be tremendously time ineffective. And this is yeah. a way to actually reach out to people and let them know that you actually care about them in a very time-efficient way. 100% agree. We've done this at Zapier in a few ways. One of the earliest ways, we did this thing called Friday Updates, which is every Friday, everyone in the company publishes what they had going on this week. And it sort of evolved over time, but... The core of it now is, hey, this was my top priority this week, and this is how far I got on it, and this is my top priority next week, and here's what I plan to do on that. But at the end of it, uh, very early on, someone added a section called Unplugged, and it was, here's what's happening with me outside of work. 
and people would share stories from the weekend, pictures of them hanging out at, with their friends, with their families, with their dogs, all this sort of stuff. And it was it's kind of an interesting component of those because there's a sect of folks in the company are like, oh, Frank Friday updates, this is such a, it's like the TPS report of Zapier, right? Where it's like, ah, who wants to do this? I think it's a really valuable thing to self-reflect and like report on your progress. But there are those who would disagree with me. And the unplug section is the thing that keeps people coming back where they're like, I love this because it's the time where I get to see other folks. And yeah, I do get to hear out like the important work stuff. You know, I, that's, that's good and all like, and of course we need to, you know, take care of our customers and, you know, solve the mission and whatnot. But how was Harry Potter world? Like, I really got to know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so like, I do think those just little bits about each other help you build a relationship and the cool thing about it, and I think this is why folks do cite I know people better, is that in a remote company, you have to find ways to get good at this stuff. And in an office, you don't necessarily. So you can certainly get to know one or two people in an office really well, the folks you sit down and eat lunch with every day or whatever, you become really, really close with. But in a remote company, you actually can get to know a lot more people really well because there's so much, a lot of people just wear it out there. They put it out there because it's part of just how you build bonds, um, which is, I think, somewhat unique to, to remote companies. Yeah. I mean, we've started doing side hustles, which I think is kind of similar where people mm -hmm. will do a presentation on maybe some Burning Man art car they made or some LED light project they have. Um, you know, we had some lady that really loved going to Comic-Con and dressing up. And uh, so, so she did a presentation about how she did all the costumes. So we have that. Um, we have a events calendar. It's not as quite like yours. It's not user generated and I would love it if we got to that point, but, uh, it's, it's run by a head of HR and uh, Bri uh, Brianna, that's basically her main job right now is these, uh, these events and bringing people together. Uh, we've got yoga, we've got, uh, breath work, meditation. People love that. Um, mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll give you one more idea. So. Uh, we did, we had a leadership dinner last night and usually for our leadership dinners, we go to a restaurant in San Francisco and you know, these are time for bonding. We don't talk too much about work, but they are like really important for us to bond together. Obviously not possible right now. So what we did was, um, our CRO has a incredible like pancetta recipe. And so what he said, he sent it out to everyone. And we bought all the ingredients and he showed us how to make it together. And it was like this, uh, you know, th this bonding experience that replicated a bit of what we had earlier. So there's a yeah. few more ideas there. That's great. I love it. I think, I think this, like, <laughs> it's, it's almost like, um, everyone in a remote company has to get good at like, like a boring Instagram feed. It's like, just like share yourself a little, but just get comfortable sharing little bits about yourself. And it doesn't have to be flashy or glamorous. In fact, just sharing the mundane things helps you feel more connected to people than anything. Honestly, just knowing that like, ah, yeah, I'm dealing with kids at home again too. And it's hard. Like, do you have any suggestions for that? Here's like the horrible art project we tried to do this morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, like that's the sort of, like, I think it's, the realness of it is endearing and it's just that it realized like, Hey, we're all part of this sort of shared human experience. And you know, it just makes work feel, I think a little more. And, and I don't know, how many times real. do you all get together? Wade? You, like, what... Well, pre COVID we did uh, two times a year, we would do the uh, big retreats where we yeah. get everyone in, uh, in the same place. And then we would often do um, a smaller get together for like functions. So like marketing would all get together or support would all get together. So you know, two to three times a year um, would sort of be the norm. And what about uh, virtually over Zoom? Do you do a weekly all hands? We do a weekly all hands, yeah. So every Thursday, there's an all hands. We rotate, for, you know, morning PST and afternoon PST so we can get, you know, different time zones of the world um, covered. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's a chance to sort of just see everyone together and show off some of the good work and have an AMA and all that other stuff. So you do a AMA every time, you know, I was asking yeah. out on Twitter uh, for recommendations about what all hands should look like. And, um, Ryan from Flexport was saying it should be kind of like Saturday night live, 
just uh, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, it's like a it's like an evening news show. Yeah, like a, yeah, <laughs> like funny, <laughs> a little informative. Um, and like before, before I was basically like showing here's a like P and L this 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 quarter, and like let me dig into these charts for you. And now I'm trying to like bring it up and, and make it a little, a little bit more entertaining. Yeah, we've been trying to get so we've been doing. Uh, during COVID, we've been doing weekly financial updates to help people feel a little bit more comfortable about like the, mm -hmm. the trajectory of the company. And uh, one of our, our um, guys that runs finance for us uh, has such a good chart that he shows. And we keep telling him, you need to make it your Zoom background huh. so that you can pretend like you're the weatherman where you can see it. And up over here, you know, things are, are trending up and to the right, which is really nice. Uh, down here, you can see we've got a bit of a cool front coming in. We're going to have to work on this a little bit. Um, so it does end up feeling a little, in my mind, it's like a little bit like a local news, mm -hmm. like community show that's a little more optimistic and upbeat and stuff. But it has that flair of just, you know, not heavily produced, amateur sort of presenting it. But it's more, it's better than amateurs, but not quite the real deal sort right. of thing. And so it just, I don't know. It yeah. makes it it's endearing. Endearing. Yeah. Yeah.